which is why when you do a lot of working in the pineal energy and this frontal cortex, your your um, and you get all this delicious oxytocin released from your meditations that you feel like you can do anything. You feel like you can create anything. And then the other parts of your autistic brain are like, what is she talking about? Like, right, like that ain't happening. And then you start running towards your dreams. And then all of a sudden you feel like you have a big leash around your neck and you're getting pulled back into someone attacking you. You lose something very important that you need. You get sick. Oh, something breaks. Something breaks that I need. The, those four things will appear in your reality. Okay. Right when you start running towards the oxytocin, that's remembrance of your body's ability to be super conscious, usually is when the other part of your brain is like this part of your brain is having a party and it's got like celebrating, you know, victory, graduation. And then the curmudgeon in the basement is like the broom, right? Sure, stop it. And you're feeling attacked. You know, they're breaking your windows, right? They're stealing your car, right? It's like, what's going on? Your joy is now being interrupted by another part of your brain. So what happens is we forget that we have millions of programs running in our hard drive that say, I can't be free. I can't be allowed. I'm not allowed. I'm not loved. I'm not seen. I'm not heard. I'm not safe. And we have our fantasies, our imaginations, our visionary, our, our hopes, our desires, our needs, believing that they are able to create this physical reality by themselves. Like, Hey, buddy, I'm going to go get all the money and then I'm going to bring it back to you and then you're going to feel valuable. Hey, buddy, I'm going to go and find the love of our life so that you know that love is real. And the, brain, the other part of your brain's like, how are you going to do that without me? I operate the hands and the feet. How are you going to go there? You know, I operate this part of you. How are you going to attract that? And so what happens is we live this disassociation. And I'm sure you've watched someone live a disassociation. And you're like, oh my gosh, they're so, like, they have no idea. Like, you know, it's like I used to watch that show, American Idol. And um, and it was like, uh, they really think they're, like, amazing. And they're like, I'm going to be the next. And they've disassociated the ability where they forgot to teach their body how to sing. They live in such a disassociation that they prefer forgot to teach their body how to sing. <laughs> so it's like everyone's watching and cringing like, oh my God, this is so awkward. And this is exactly how the universe feels for you when you get really like feeling better than everything else. And then you get into crashing insecurities for four minutes later. You're like, oh, I'm, I'm nothing, right? And you are feeling like, I am bipolar. What is wrong with me? Now, you're going to find the biggest struggle right now in your manifestations, okay? Because who you believe you are and who your brain believes you are are very different. And this is why you have so much trouble when you go home, okay? Because your brain's perspective of who you are is closely connected to who your family thinks you are. Okay. Who your loved ones think you are, who you think you are is escapism of who your brain thinks you are. And this is why you feel so enlightened and you feel so good about yourself and you feel so great when you're alone. And then the second you go back into interacting with any of that environment that uses five senses to figure out who it is, you feel small again. You feel broke again. You feel worthless again. You find yourself overeating. You find yourself over talking. You find yourself hiding. And you're like, wait, I just spent $60,000 in Peru with a shaman on an enlightenment journey. And, you know, I go home for Thanksgiving and it's like I've done nothing. <laughs>